Picking up where we left off, we were talking about the quantum numbers, and we left off with the second quantum number, which was the angular momentum quantum number, or letter L. And as a reminder, the letter L told us what shape that the atomic orbital would be. If the value of L was zero, this would correspond to the S shape, which would be a sphere. If it corresponded to one, this would be the P subshell, or the dumbbell shape. If the value of L was two, this would correspond to the D subshell, which would be that clover shape. And finally, if the value of L was three, this would correspond to the F subshell, which was that funky shape. How can you tell what shape there will be based on looking at the periodic table? This is a good image to show us where those four shapes lie on the periodic table. I recommend take the periodic table that you've been using for this course and somehow note these four shapes on the periodic table. So we have the S block, which are gonna be these first two columns of the periodic table. Notice that helium, even though it's on the right, is actually part of that S block. You could imagine helium fits that spot right there. The P block is the main group of elements over here, groups 13 to 18. The D block is gonna be this region of space right here in the transition metal region. And the F block will be down here in these two rows, the lanthanides and the actinides. Now, it's probably a good idea to write this down now, so when we get to electron configurations later on in the topic, we've seen it before. The S and P block, the energy level is equal to the row number. So when we're looking at these two blocks, S and P, whatever row number we're in will be the energy level that we're in. For example, if we're in row two, then that corresponds to energy level two. If we're in row three, energy level three, and so on. For the D block, we find that the energy is the row number minus one. So for example, right here, this is row number four. The S would be in the fourth energy level, but the D elements here would actually be the row number minus one, so three. This will make more sense when we look at electron configurations later, but for right now, we're just gonna log, log this away. Finally, the F block is gonna be the row number minus two. And remember that these elements here actually fit right in between here. So this block of elements here are actually sandwiched right in between here, which corresponds to row number six. So if it's row number six, this would be the fourth energy level. And these, this block of elements here are sandwiched right in between here, which corresponds to being in row seven. So since it's row seven, it will be the fifth energy level. Like I said, it'll make more sense when we get to electron configurations, but it, it seemed like a good time to bring it up so we have it at least in our notes. So let's do an example real quick before we move on to the other two quantum numbers. So the principal quantum number, n, tells you blank of an atomic orbital. Well, a couple ways you could answer this. You could answer the size of the atomic orbital or distance from the nucleus. Because technically, it's one and the same, right? So both of those would answer that question. The angular momentum quantum number, L, tells you the blank of an atomic orbital. And that would be shape. And finally, when N equals three, what are the possible values for L? What shapes of orbitals would this correspond to? So remember, when n equals three, meaning we are looking at the third floor or third shell of the atom, what values of L are possible? Well, if we did n minus one, we would end up getting two. But remember, what that tells us is that tells us that's the maximum value for L. Where does L start counting from? Remember, L equals zero. L equals one, and then finally, L equals two. What are the shapes each of those L values corresponds to? The L equals zero value corresponds to the S subshell. The L equals one value corresponds to the P subshell. 
And finally, the L equals 2 value corresponds to the D subshell. So there are three shapes that would be allowed on the third energy level. Let's keep going. The third quantum number, which is the magnetic quantum number, M sub L. Well, let's go back to our hotel. Okay, if we have our hotel, we've said that the N value is like telling us what floor number we're on. The L value was telling us the room type. But the M sub L value is actually the specific room itself, the room number, if you will. Yes, there could be a lot of suites on, row, on floor three, but there's a specific suite that has a certain number on it, right? There's a lot of different suites, but now we've narrowed it down to a specific room. The M sub L value is going to tell us the specific orbital or orientation along the XYZ axis that we're looking at. It's when you get to the M sub L value, now you have narrowed it down to an actual atomic orbital. The L value just told you the shape of the orbital, but it didn't actually tell you the specific orbital we were looking at. So it's the M sub L value that tells us what orbital we're looking at. What values could M sub L have? It will range from negative L to positive L. So for example, if, you're, if your value of L that you're looking at is 2, then the values that M sub L could have would be negative 2, negative 1, 0, positive 1, positive 2. In other words, there, were, there can be five values for M sub L. To go along with that uh, thinking, that can be summarized down here. If your L value is 0, the only M sub L value you could have is 0. Which, court, which means there's only one orbital, because there's only one value. If your L value is 1, which is the P subshell, then your values for M sub L could be negative 1, 0, or positive 1. In other words, there are three orbitals, because each of those numbers corresponds to an orbital. If your L value is 2, which is the D subshell, that means your values for M sub L are negative 2, negative 1, 0, positive 1, and positive 2, which means there are five orbitals. And finally, if your L value is 3, corresponding to the F subshell, your values for M sub L is negative 3, negative 2, negative 1, 0, 1, 2, and 3. In other words, there are 7 orbitals. Now here's something really cool. What did I tell you was the maximum number of electrons that every single element, could, or every single orbital, excuse me, could hold? It was 2, right? There are 2 electrons that every single orbital can hold, regardless of what type of orbital it is. So, if the S subshell only has one orbital, that means it can only hold two electrons. If the P subshell has three orbitals, that means it can hold six electrons. If the D subshell has five orbitals, that means it can hold ten electrons. And if the F subshell has seven orbitals, that means it can hold fourteen. And that's always true. If we know what shape of orbital we're looking at, we can figure out total how many electrons that shape can hold. And the really cool thing is that corresponds to the periodic table. Remember, how many electrons could an S subshell hold? Only two. There's two, 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 two. The P subshell could hold six, right? Well, six, 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 Six. Hmm, I'm seeing a pattern. The D sub shell could hold 10, right? 10, 10, 10, and 10. And I think you see where we're going. The F sub shell can hold 14. If you count them up, that's 14 and 14. So that's really cool. It aligns with the periodic table. The final quantum number. You have figured out what floor of the hotel we're on. We figured out what shape or room type. We've even narrowed it down to the specific room itself or the specific orbital. And we know that two electrons are in that orbital. So the final quantum number, the M sub S, is the spin quantum number. When you get down to the specific orbital itself that holds two electrons, those two electrons cannot have the same spin. One has to be spinning one direction and the other has to be spinning the other direction. The values for this are arbitrarily positive half and negative half. 
when we get to doing electron configurations and orbital diagrams, you'll see that electrons have the notation of an arrow. Notice the different spins. As a summary of what we just learned, the, F, the S subshell has only one orbital. The P subshell has three orbitals. The D subshell has five orbitals. And the F subshell has seven orbitals. If we know that each of those orbitals shown can hold two electrons, the S can hold two max electrons, the P subshell can hold six, the D subshell can hold 10, and the F subshell can hold 14, with our spins over here as being positive half or negative half. This slide right here is a great review of all of our quantum numbers that we've gone through. But let's do some examples to hopefully solidify the information we've learned. Consider an atom that has three energy levels. Let's say, for example, sodium. Sodium has three energy levels. How do I know that? Because it's in row three. So I know it has three energy levels. For each energy level, I'd like you to state, number one, how many subshells are there and what type? Number two, how many electrons are in each subshell? And finally, how many electrons total are in each energy level? Let's go through and do number one. How many subshells and what are their types? So if we're looking at n equals 1, the maximum value for L I could have is n minus 1, or in other words, L equals 0. That's the only L value that's allowed on the first floor. If the n value is 2, we're looking at the second energy level, then the maximum value for L I can have is 1, but I also have it starting at L equals 0. And if the n value is 3, the third energy level, I can have a value of L equals 0, L equals 1, and L equals 2. So to answer the question, how many subshells are there? There's one subshell, which is the S. In the second energy level, how many subshells are there? There are two, the S and the P. In the third energy level, how many subshells are there? There are three, the S subshell, the P subshell, and finally the D subshell. Question two, how many electrons are in each subshell? Remember, how many electrons can an S subshell hold? Only two. That's obviously gonna be the same for these other S subshells. Even though they're in different energy levels, they're still an S subshell. S subshells can only hold two because they only have the one orbital. What about P subshells? How many electrons can they hold? If you remember, P subshells can hold six electrons. Why? because they have P subshells have three orbitals. And finally, how many elements or how many electrons can a D subshell hold? 10, because there are five orbitals for a D subshell. Last question, how many electrons total can be in each energy level? Well, in energy level one, there's only two electrons, so that's the total. In energy level two, there are two electrons in the S and six electrons in the P. Total, there are eight electrons that are allowed in the second energy level. For the third energy level, two electrons can be in the S, six can be in the P, and 10 can be in the D. Total, 18 electrons can exist in the third energy level. All right, we're gonna actually pause the video here and we're gonna pick up with this example in the next video.